wait i've discovered that almost 79 percent of you guys are not subscribed to this channel so if you're watching this and you're not subscribed subscribe we'd love to have you here at the time of me making this video the sonic the hedgehog franchise is in a very weird state it hasn't been a bad year the sonic the hedgehog movie did great things for this franchise but it hasn't been a particularly good one either gives me depression. Sonic was created and is still very much viewed as a video game character, and this year we haven't received a lot of video game content. All of it has been on mobile. The only thing that really released was Sonic at the Olympic Games, which kind of came and went already. But I feel like a lot of us have been overlooking and taking for granted something that's truly amazing. I'm talking about a game that pays homage to the past, is relatively successful, and it's still pushing itself forward with new releases and updates. The game I'm of course talking about is Sonic Runners adventure. I love this game so much. It's so amazing. Look at it. It hasn't been touched in years. Yeah, if you guys couldn't tell, that was sarcasm. The game we're talking about is Sonic Forces Speed Battle. I know, the F word might scare you, but just refrain from your fear, because this game has truly kept the spirit of Sonic alive while we haven't really had a lot this year in terms of the video games. I know having mobile only might not be your cup of tea, but it's some content, and it's been giving us some really cool stuff that I feel like a lot of us haven't been a appreciating that much. With so many awesome updates and events going on, I thought it'd be an amazing time to give a nice love letter and backstory to this game that I feel like a lot of us have been taking for granted. Now the backstory to this game isn't anything that crazy. It doesn't have the weirdest or funniest story, the most adversity. In fact, the game is more interesting now than it was back then because of all the updates that have happened. But I do think that there are some interesting tidbits on how this game came to be. This game started production in 2016, but it wasn't really originally developed as Sonic Force speed battle. It was actually originally developed as a Sonic Boom game. That's right, Sonic Boom. I guess Hardlight saw that there was something that you could maybe squeeze out of this thing. Because Sonic Dash 2 Sonic Boom didn't really go according to plan. Do you play that game? Probably not. They wanted to take another swing at things. But by that time, Sonic Boom was as good as dead. Yeah, the show was still running around that time, and toys were still kind of coming out, but it was definitely on its deathbed, and there was an end in sight. There also isn't that much you could do with a Sonic Boom game in this style. I mean, what character is he gonna add in updates? Swifty the Shrew? The Bike Chain Bandit? I mean, come on. So, when the idea was presented to Sonic Team, they were like, Hey, we started this game called Sonic Forces yesterday. Let's make this a modern thing. And thus, Sonic Forces Speed Battle was born. I still don't like that it's called Sonic Forces Speed Battle. Just call it Sonic Speed Battle, please. I hate the name Forces. Get rid of it. Anyways, the game did release on September 11th, 2017. Kind of. It was a soft launch like a lot of these Sonic mobile games do, to test out if everything's working properly, stuff like that. But the official release of it was on November 2nd, 2017 for iOS and November 15th, 2017 for Android. But this game did have some pretty big shoes to fill. Sonic Dash is low-key the biggest success the Sonic the Hedgehog video game franchise has ever had. It's extremely popular popular to this day. I feel like a lot of people overlook it and just look at the main Sonic video games like Sonic Forces and Sonic Mania and the comics and the movie and the cartoons, but they just don't look at the mobile market. Like, it's huge. The games had like, what, over 400 million downloads worldwide? It's the most downloaded Sonic game ever. And this game is the real follow-up to that. Sonic Dash 2 Sonic Boom was, you know, just Sonic Dash with Sonic Boom characters. This is a true proper follow-up because it's just brand new and different. It's online. And I think that was a very big factor with this game's success. It was like online racing with Sonic. It gives it that more competitive aspect, if you will. You're going against other people. There's more of a challenge, unlike Sonic Dash, which is just an endless runner. You go against other people, and it's really fun. Now, you guys have to remember, Sonic Dash is very popular. So, obviously, a follow-up to this will catch some eyes. Is it the greatest game of all time? No. It's a mobile game. So, as long as it's inoffensive, well-made, and fun, who cares? At the time of me making this video, this game has over 50 million downloads. Well, that's nowhere near as ginormous as the first Sonic Dash, it's still a respectable number. Now, I know a lot of you guys are asking the question, Ricardo, why is this video titled The Best Sonic Game of 2020? One, Ricardo, you stupid idiot. The game released in 2017. Do you know how to count? poopy head. And number two, I'm gonna pretend I don't even know what's going on with this game currently, so could you please tell me? Of course, audience member who is 
really rude. I will explain. This game has turned from a simple Sonic Forces mobile spinoff that most people would forget in a couple weeks, to an absolute love letter and callback slash Sonic Runners follow-up almost. They might be questioning that comparison, and I understand this game plays nothing like Sonic Runners, but Sonic Runners had so much fan service, obscure characters, weird costumes, awesome events, and Sonic Forces Speed Battle has obscure characters, weird costumes, and awesome events. Obviously, it doesn't play anything like Runners, but it's taken some of what people loved about Runners and applied it to itself. There's so much to go over here, so let's just dive into all of the awesome stuff that they have going on over there at Sonic Forces Speed Battle. Of course, the game started off with your standard characters, but it's what they've added in the past, what, two years? That's been really great. Not only do we have pretty much all of the roster of Team Sonic Racing, but we also have the Babylon Rogues. Cream actually is being used in Sonic Media. I know it's crazy, but this game also has major adventure representation. Of course, the adventure fan base has become much more vocal. We all are waiting for those remakes or an Adventure 3. So seeing people like Takal and Chaos appear in this game is awesome. I mean, to call is here. When do you see this daughter of a gun? And yeah, you have three members of the Deadly Six. We don't acknowledge them, let's move on. But it's just so cool to see the character representation. It shows what could possibly come up in other Sonic games or Sonic merchandise. But then you have the specials. Not just the standard character and their standard appearance, they have cool costumes or different looks for characters. And there's so many wacky things for certain times of the year or certain holidays. You have All-Star Amy and Slugger Sonic for basketball season. You know, when they're throwing those touchdowns, it's so cool. Santa Big and Elf Classic Sonic. Ice Slicer Jet. Lunar Blaze, Lantern Silver, you have the Halloween stuff like the Reaper Metal Sonic, Witch Rouge, and Vampire Shadow. And of course, when you're filling in that tropical season, you have Spring Cream, Tidal Wave, and Tropical Storm. I see what you guys did there. Looking at this stuff is really cool, but it just makes me kind of upset that these things aren't like plushies or action figures. I don't know, I just think they'd be the perfect things to merchandise. Speaking of things that should have merchandise, uh, Tangle and Whisper are in this game. Yeah, that's right. Tangle and Freaking Whisper from the IDW comics. This just has so many possibilities, like, could they appear in more games? Could there be more stuff for them in general down the line? I don't know, I guess we'll have to wait and see, but it's super cool to see. But something that I was happy to see was that Sonic the Hedgehog movie earlier this year. Oh boy, did I love that thing. I always get upset when I'm reminded of the fact that I can't marry an animate object, so I'm sorry Sonic Movie Blu-ray, I can't marry you right now. Hopefully Biden will change that later down the line. But there's some Sonic movie characters in this thing. To coincide with the film's release, they had a long claw the owl. I know she only had like, what, two minutes of screen time, but... It, it was cool to have her here, I guess. And of course, Baby Sonic and Teen Sonic. I really don't know why he's called Teen Sonic. Canonically, I think James Marsden called him a 12-year-old, so Kid Sonic? I don't know. I honestly don't like Sonic having an age. But anyways, they're in this thing and they look great, and I'm so glad they're here. I'm really just happy that they capitalized off the movie and found something to do with it. If there was anything Sonic the Hedgehog going on right now that would do it, it's Speed Battle, and it's such a cool addition. But 2020 hasn't slowed down, in fact, the most recent additions are some of the coolest yet. Excalibur freaking Sonic is in this game from Sonic and the Black Knight. Super decked out, super awesome looking. The fact that they're able to go back to like a mid Sonic game, like you know that shit kind of mid, and bring it over to something completely new, makes me wonder on what else we could get. Could we get Dark Spine Sonic? Mephilus? Sonic with soap shoes? Please? There are infinite possibilities of characters they could bring over if there is no limit. There probably is a limit of some sorts, but it might be looser than we think. If I were to tell you to hold off on anything, I don't think Sonya or Manic or any of those characters from Deke, so that includes the Freedom Fighters, I'm sorry to break your hopes and dreams, but I'm excited to see what characters they're going to release in the future. As of right now, the two most recent additions are going to come out very soon, that being Elite Agent Rouge and Treasure Hunter Knuckles. Obviously alternative costumes, nothing that crazy, but Knuckles has his cowboy hat from the OVA. You guys know me, I really don't like the OVA, I think it sucks on all fronts. It's just my opinion, you're allowed to like it. But I just think it's such a cool touch. I like callbacks, I'm a sucker for that stuff. I, I, I just love it, it's super cool. Sega and Heartlight were able to turn a simple Sonic Forces tie-in mobile game to this giant love letter and callback machine that is Sonic Forces Speed Battle. Still, you guys should remove the forces, please. The amount of care and effort that they've put into this thing, the amount of callbacks, and probably the push that they've had to do to get some of these characters in this thing, is really commendable. 
cool, and I really do appreciate it. I know this obviously shouldn't be the best Sonic game of 2020. It wasn't even made this year, but it has the most content out of any Sonic game this year and has got us probably the most excited, but at this point I do think we just have to be patient. This is the definition of the perfect time waster and thing to hold somebody over. It's the perfect game to play on the bus or in the car on your way to work or I actually don't recommend you do that. You're gonna, gonna crash. crash. Ah. So if you're looking for some Sonic the Hedgehog fun in 2020, check out Sonic Forces Speed Battle. It's available right now on the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. It's a fun time and you will not regret it. So in the meantime, I'm gonna sit back, kick my feet up, and wait for Chris Thorndike to be added to Sonic Forces Speed Battle. Come on, Hardlight, make it happen. Ah.